All right, we're going to be sewing up a Bacall bodysuit today. This is an unlined version here. It's got short sleeves and a crew neckband. This pattern has a lot of options, so here's just one. I do have another sew up where I am doing the fully lined one. You're going to start off with sewing up your shoulder seams with your front and your back piece right sides together. This pattern has a 3 8 seam allowance, which is a little smaller than my normal patterns. So just remember that as you're sewing it up. I tend to use this smaller seam allowance, 3 8 when I'm doing swimwear, any kind of lingerie, any really tight fit. Um, a lot of swimwear you end up using 3 8 inch elastic and things and it just tends to work out a little bit better. Alright, now we're going to do the neck band. Put it in just like any t-shirt neck, ba neck band. You're going to grab your piece and then you're going to fold it horizontally with the right sides together. You do want to make sure you have a nice stretchy piece of fabric. This bodysuit is for high stretch fabrics, so I did the neck band calculation for high stretch fabrics as well. So I assumed most people would use the same fabric for their bodysuit and their neck band. So if you're wanting to do a contrast one with less stretch, you're probably going to need to add a little bit of length to your neck band. This is for a very stretchy knit fabric. Now I'm folding the neck band in half wrong sides together and um, just marking it in halves. You can mark it into even quarters. It's a really tight little crew neck. Um, so it's a pretty small neck band, so I only did halves personally, but if you're a beginner, you probably want to, um, mark it into even quarters. Then see, I just did halves. It's also a good idea to press this. If you're a beginner, it helps hold, you know, that fold at the top perfectly even for you as you're stitching it on. Some people also like to baste along the bottom edges together to keep them even. If you're having trouble keeping everything together, you can certainly baste around the edges. Now I'm just going to make sure I'm attaching the back seam to the back and then the front to the center front. The neck band's gonna be smaller than the neckline and I'm going to stretch the neck band to fit it. So if you marked it into even quarter points, then you can also pin it those. I just did here and then I stretched evenly. I did throw a few more clips or pins in. I like to do this best with the shirt inside out like this. I think it's the easiest. Remember if you're marking your neckline into quarter points, those shoulder seams are not quarter points. The front neckline always dips down a little bit lower than the back. And so your quarter points will be towards the front on the front of the neckline. Again, I didn't do that. I just stretched evenly and then pinned it in place. As you stitch this on, it's again going to have a 3 8 inch seam allowance, so you're, if you're on a serger like me, you're only going to be trimming off an eighth of an inch. It is a rather small neckline because it is so high and tight to the neck. I didn't want it too thick and going up onto the neck. So be really careful and go nice and slow, making sure you keep that seam allowance really even as you stitch it on. Also, make sure you're only stretching your neck band here as you stitch. You shouldn't have to stretch the neck band too much, even though it's for stretchy fabric. Since, it, since you will be using stretchy fabric, it'll stretch really easily for you, the, the amount that it needs. 
If you feel like you're having to tug your neck, ba your neck band a whole lot, chances are you need a stretchier neck band piece. But you do not want to stretch the neckline as you sew. That will give you a wavy seam. You only want to stretch the neck band just to fit the neckline. Now you can press your neckline. You can also top stitch if you want to. Always wait to the end to top stitch. Um, so I'm not going to top stitch in the video. Now what we're going to do is with right sides together, we're going to stitch down both side seams. If you're doing a stripe fabric like me, go ahead and match all those stripes if you did when you were cutting it out. If not, you're just going to go from armpit through the waist down to the hip. Again, using the same 3 8 inch seam allowance. This is a really quick and easy step, so I'm going to speed up my sewing a little bit so you don't get too bored. There's nothing tricky here. Just follow the curve of the waist and keep your seam allowance nice and even. Make sure you're not pulling the front or the back. They should be perfectly even, matching exactly from armpit to the hip. Now we're going to do the sleeves. So I have short sleeves here, but it's the same method for pretty much all the sleeves. If you are doing the gathered sleeves, you do have one more step of actually running the gathering stitches along the top of the sleeve cap, but we're going to fold it horizontally right sides together and stitch down um, the seam right here. Again, repeating on the opposite side, making sure they're both right sides together. You don't want to end up with two left sides or two right sides, so make sure you got right sides together on these. Now we're going to flip our sleeve right sides out, and the body of our shirt or bodysuit. Um, wrong sides out. You do want to take note that there's a front notch and a back double notch and then there's also a notch here at the top and that aligns to the shoulder seam. The back of the sleeve and the arm side are always a little bit longer. We're just a little bit longer there on the back than the front. So it is important to make sure to match the front with the front, the back with the back. So again, with our bodysuits, right sides in, so wrong sides out, sorry, inside out. You want your main body inside out and then the sleeve right side out. So that when you slip your sleeve into the armhole here, they're right sides together. You're gonna match them and all those notches that I just mentioned, plus the side seam will match the seam on the shirt, on the sleeve. It's a good idea to nest these seams, which means push one to the back, push one to the front, just so they don't add extra bulk where they cross over. Your notches should all align without stretching the sleeve or stretching the shirt. If you are doing the gathered sleeve, of course you'll have gathering at the top. And also the sleeve will normally have a little bit of ease in the top of the of the cap so kind of from that front notch and the back double notch around the shoulder it'll feel like you have extra sleeve but really it's just the curve of the sleeve needing to be eased in to the arm side again same 3 8 inch seam allowance here go nice and slow don't want any puckers here slowly easing that curved sleeve cap into the arm side. It shouldn't be too difficult. You shouldn't have too much ease, just, just a little bit. They match perfectly at the seam allowance. So all the extra ease should just be at the very edge. 
just getting that curve to kind of go into that more straight arm side. And then I'm going to repeat on the other side. I'm not even going to show you sewing the other side because it is the exact same thing. Just the right sleeve from the left sleeve. When you go around the other edge, I always just like to serge right on top in any circle. Make sure you come off nice and smooth. There you go. My one sleeve, and then we're just going to do, do it again on the other side. Boop. There we go. If you have a sleeve option that is just going to be hemmed, you can take the time to press it under half an inch here. And now we're going to finish the leg line. So all around the front and the back, all along the bottom. Since we're doing unlined, we're going to grab our Pico Elastic. I do not give a measurement in this because Pico Elastic is one of those things where some can have a whole, whole lot of recovery um, and not stretch very much. And some can be super stretchy and not have great recovery. So you're going to have to use your Pico Elastic by the feel of it. Um, if you're unsure, I highly suggest basting it first because it's very, very easy to tell if you did it correctly after it's sewn on, which is a little bit tricky because you don't want to sew it first before you know if it's right or wrong. But that's the way it is. Once you've done it a lot, you'll have a feel for how tight you need to hold it. I always say you don't really need to stretch the Pico elastic, but you do need to hold it taut. So if you do it too loose, what will happen is when you lay your, your bodysuit on the table, it will look very wavy. And you can see behind where my bodysuit is coming off of the serger back there. It's not wavy. It's just flat. It's exactly what you want. You don't want the shape of your bodysuit or the leg line right here to change at all after you add the Pico elastic. So you do not want it to gather up. If it's gathering it up and it's making it smaller, you are stretching your Pico elastic and you need to hold it looser. If you lay it on your table and it looks really wobbly and wavy, you can't get it to lay flat, you have eased in your elastic and you put too much elastic. You need to hold your elastic tighter. You might even say slightly stretch. Some people say slightly stretch. Um, it's just there's a fine line there <laughs> between <laughs> stretching and easing it in and you don't want to do either of those so here it mine is again it's nice and flat it looks the same it's not gathered it's not wobbly this is exactly what you want if you baste it first you can always really quickly take it off and try again I wish it was as simple as doing a percentage or anything but I really find that Pico Elastic can really vary and so I honestly think the safest way is to just continue to practice until you get a feel for how tight you need to hold your elastic as it's feeding through the machine. And also grab a bunch of scraps if you have extra Pico to test it out. Um, but if you don't have extra, that's okay. Just baste it on. That way if it is too loose and wobbly you can quickly take it off cut some pico elastic off and try again if it's gathered and it's too tight you can take it off and add a little bit more so that you're not stretching your elastic as much so it's okay if you don't have extra to practice if you do go for it if not baste it on I forgot to mention as well this is a quarter inch seam allowance you cannot take a bigger seam allowance with pico so this is a quarter inch seam allowance here. After we're done with this, we are going to just flip the seam allowance underneath and top stitch. I prefer to use my cover stitch, 
but you can also use your sewing machine. If you're using a sewing machine, um, I just use a zigzag. It must be a super stretchy stitch. So something like the triple step zigzag would work perfectly. Now it's time to top stitch. I like to top stitch everything all at once. So I will be using my cover stitch and you just press the seam allowance under and then top stitch all along the pico. I also be doing my neckband and my sleeves at the same time because why not? If you don't have a cover stitch, sewing machine works great for all of these, for hemming the sleeves, for top stitching your pico, and if you want to top stitch your neckband or not. All right, we're almost done. Next up, all we need to do is add our closure along the bottom. This might be a tiny bit scary or intimidating if you've never done it, but actually this hook and eye tape is very, 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 very simple to install. So do not worry about it. It'll be over in no time. It's very quick and easy. I'm just trimming up all of my serger threads, cover stitch threads, and I'm also trimming off those little notches and the center notches to align everything. Now we are going to just make sure our bodysuit is right sides out, facing all correctly, it's not twisted or anything, and we're going to grab our hook and eye tape. I know um, I will be asked, I just grabbed this really giant roll of it off of Amazon because I knew I was going to have to make a whole lot of them. So that's all I know of where I got this. I don't know where you can get a smaller amount. But I grabbed this giant roll off of Amazon if you are wondering. So all we're going to do is measure out how wide we want it. So for mine, I do a size medium. It was about four to five hooks. And then we're just going to cut the same width on the hook. Now I have a triple layer which is nice if, um, you know, you fluctuate or maybe a fabric doesn't have quite as much vertical stretch, but really there's no need for the three rows. It's just what I grabbed. You are perfectly fine to use one with just one row of hooks. And honestly, it might be a little more comfortable wearing it. This one was kind of wide to wear since um, there was the three rows. If you were making it for other people though, it could be really great for a, just a little bit of wiggle room for their height. All we're going to do is fold over. I'm doing the hooks first. I prefer my hooks on this back piece. You can do it however you like. I find it more natural to have the hooks on this back piece and then they hook onto the front piece. But as long as you make sure they're both facing the right way, you can do it however you like. I'm just pinning it in place. You literally just sandwich your fabric right in between and pin it down. It is um, a little bit thick to pin it through and to stitch through. Just the hook and eye tape is a little bit thicker. But of course it needs to be. It's all stabilized and everything. There we go. That's it. Now we're going to repeat kind of the same thing with the hooks. The hooks are slightly different in that you don't have to fold them. They just have this little double layer right here on this side. So on this one, you just open up that little double layer, slide your fabric inside up to the, you know, as far as you can and then pin it in place. I find this much, much easier than doing an entire snap pocket and snaps. Um, I also have a hard time, no matter how hard I try, the snaps where you kind of squeeze them on with pliers, my hands just must not be strong enough to do it tightly enough and my snaps end up coming out. 
Now I know you can get like a cam press with um, heavier duty stuff, but I don't have one. So I do sometimes use like hammer and snaps, but I didn't want heavy duty snaps on the bottom of my bodysuit. So I really like this option for a bodysuit. Hopefully you do too. Um, the Be Bold, I did use a snap placket and snaps. So if you don't like this and you'd rather snaps, you can always steal that snap placket and snap instructions from the Be Bold. Or if you have the Be Bold and you try this and you think, well, I like this much better, you can steal this and put it on the Be Bold. There you go. Make sure before you sew it on, everything's facing the right way. It's going to hook correctly. I did have a tester um, who accidentally sewed one on the wrong way. So double check, make sure it's all facing the right way and it's going to hook together. I find it's much easier to stitch this on with a zipper foot. You can just get in there nice and tight to the hooks and the little loops um, a little easier, I think. I also like to pull up my bobbin thread so that both have a little tail. I just think it's easier to stitch through the thicker fabric having the tails out there. That way if my sewing machine thinks it's a little bulky, I have something back there to help. You can stitch down the sides or only across the top, whatever you like. I usually stitch down the little sides and then across the top and down the other little side. There's no need to stitch down the side, so you can skip that. And it's just right along the edge here. I usually use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the very edge of the hook and eye tape to my stitch line. I just use a regular old straight stitch here as well. You do want to make sure if you are sewing your bodysuit with your sewing machine using a stretch needle, you're going to need to change your needle before you stitch these hook and eye tapes. They're kind of thick and you need um, a universal would probably be fine, but I would not try to stitch it with a stretch needle. You might even need a little bit heavier duty depending on how thick your bodysuit is, if you lined your bodysuit. Mine's unlined and it's pretty thin rib knit so it didn't struggle at all with just a universal needle here. Just repeating the exact same thing on the back piece. Normal straight stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Try to get you a little closer here so you can really see it's really quite easy. I think that everyone will really love this method versus the snaps. It is something that you don't always have on hand, but it is great to have in case you do. I can't wait to see everybody's Bacall bodysuits. I named this bodysuit after Lauren Bacall, who was a famous actress. Um, she's in one of my favorite movies, <laughs> How to Marry a Millionaire. She's stunning and beautiful. And I hope you feel stunning and beautiful, just like her in this bodysuit. Don't forget to share with us when you make your Bacall bodysuits on whatever social media you use. We love seeing your makes. Bye, y'all.